There's something oddly fun about shopping for PC parts you're not going to keep. Figuring out the build's purpose, setting a budget, and then narrowing down your component choices, it's like a treasure hunt. It can also be difficult, especially when inventories are empty, prices are jacked, and shipping times are long. All of that combined has made PC building this year challenging to say the least, especially when trying to stay within a set price range. GPUs once again have proved particularly challenging to find in stock and at a decent price. Thankfully though, it's not as bad as 2018. Last month when I was looking for and purchasing parts, my GPU search led me to the EVGA 2070 Super KO Gaming. It was in stock and selling for only 7 bucks over the $499 MSRP. The KO Gaming isn't anything special in terms of stats or build quality. It has a sturdy plastic shroud instead of a metal one, and the heatsink is a cool black chrome color, but it doesn't differ from the Founder Edition's card, sticking to the 1605MHz memory clock and the 1770MHz boost clock speeds. This is the first RTX card I've purchased, and I was excited to say the least. However, when I opened the box and saw the GPU for the first time, I wasn't blown away like I normally am. When I saw the back of the card, there was no backplate. To be honest, I became a little irate, mostly at myself because I would have seen the lack of a backplate had I clicked on all the expanded images within Newegg's product page. But to say I'm not a little irked at EVGA as well would be a lie. They're charging over $500 for the 2070 Super KO Gaming, and it doesn't come with a backplate. Not even a cheap plastic one. And do you know what GPU of theirs does have a backplate? A nice metal one in fact? The 2060 KO Gaming, a GPU that not only costs $200 less than the 2070 Super, but is also way less powerful. Why am I telling you this story? Simple. I want you to avoid my mistakes. This is a cautionary tale. Get all the information on a product before you add to cart and check out. This way you won't be unpleasantly surprised like I was. Not all is gray skies and storms though. I'm going to take this opportunity to do what EVGA didn't, make a GPU backplate for the RTX 2070 Super KO Gaming, and in the process, I hope this video teaches you how to make one too. Thanks for coming, and welcome to the middle of nowhere. Let's go over the supplies we'll need. We need acrylic. You can get this at your local hardware store or Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description for this big piece here. You can find inexpensive acrylic at Lowe's, such as optics. It's not the highest quality, but can serve in a pinch. Don't buy anything thinner than 2.5 millimeters and strive to get three to four millimeter thick acrylic. The next thing you'll need is a plastic cutter. You're not going to actually be cutting the acrylic so much as scoring it. And once you've scored it enough, you'll be able to break it off. If you don't get colored acrylic, you'll want to buy some paint. Choose any color you want, but make sure it bonds to plastic. I have Krylon and Rust-Oleum spray paints here that are both a paint and a primer in one. I have both glossy and satin or matte finishes. Next up, you'll need a file and or sandpaper. When you cut and break the acrylic, it may not necessarily be the smoothest. Having sandpaper or a file will help get rid of any rough edges. I do recommend filing or sanding outside to avoid plastic particles in the house. You'll need two kinds of tape. A low-tack painter's tape, use this to tape off the areas you don't want painted, and 3M tape, this is for sticking the backplate to the GPU. After that, you'll need some flat pliers. These will come in handy to break off any tiny little pieces that don't necessarily come off cleanly. You'll need a ruler to measure and guide your cutter. And then finally, you'll want some masks and glasses because you gotta protect your eyes and your lungs. Now that we have all our supplies in order, let's get to making that backplate. First, measure the GPU to get dimensions for the backplate and write them down. Measure twice to be sure, and if you have a large piece of acrylic like I do, you may want to invest in a T-square or a longer ruler. Make several marks across the piece so you make sure to maintain a straight line. I didn't do this, and I ended up having to do additional cuts until it was the right size. Cut your acrylic to size. Do this by scoring it several times. I recommend at least 10 passes with the plastic cutter. Make sure you've scored enough times before attempting to snap the acrylic, otherwise you could end up fracturing the piece entirely. When ready, put the acrylic on a surface with a severe corner, then push down. The acrylic should snap cleanly. You may want to use some clamps like I did to help keep the majority of the acrylic in place. After you've snapped the acrylic, do a test fit to see if the plate fits on your GPU. If not, make any necessary adjustments, do another test fit, and if it's good to go, you're ready to move on. After you've snapped the acrylic, file or sand away any rough edges. Next, we'll make the design for our backplate. You can do this by hand, by cutting some stencils using paper and adhering it with painter's tape. Or if you have a vinyl cutter, you can use that to cut out a design you make with software and then transfer it to the acrylic. For this backplate, I'll be using the Middle of Nowhere logo as a, the design. After you have the design applied to the acrylic, tape off any areas you don't want painted. Now it's time to paint. For best results, follow the instructions on the label, but here are some additional pointers. Be sure you paint in a highly ventilated area and one that isn't dusty. Let your paint dry thoroughly before touching it to avoid marring the surface. 
I recommend at least doing two coats of paint, but you can add more if needed. Repeat if you plan on painting both sides. When your paint has dried, remove the tape and your design carefully. You don't want to rip the paint along the sticker or tape. Apply 3M tape to secure the GPU backplate. A little goes a long way. I recommend four tiny squares near each corner. Avoid putting tape on any sensitive components on the GPU and instead opt for screws or blank spots on the PCB. When you're done with the tape, put the plate on the GPU. And that's it! You just made yourself a GPU backplate. All that's left to do is to install that GPU and admire your handiwork. There it is, a nifty little GPU backplate. Hopefully this video will serve as a good enough tutorial for you to be able to make one of your own should you need to. Thanks for watching everybody. Hit that like button if you liked what you saw. Share any questions or comments you have down below. I'll be using this GPU on a future PC build, so click subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future content. I'm Seth, and I'll see you next time in the middle of nowhere.